it's time to die. That's what the murderer told children before he started shooting them in their classrooms. It's time to die. We have a door in the middle, and he opened it, and then he came in and he crouched a little bit, and he said, it's time to die. When he shot, it was very loud, and it hurt my ear. When I saw the bullets on the floor, it was real. The boy was hiding under that table with a friend. He saw his teacher get shot and killed. He saw another classmate get shot and killed by the gunman as the police approached the classroom. I was telling my friend to not talk because he's going to hear us. The cop said, help if you need help. And then um, the guy, one, one of the persons in my class said, help. Um, the guy overheard, and he, sh he came in and shot her. And then the cops barged in into that classroom, and um, the guy shot the cops, and the cops just started shooting. So this video is absolutely heartbreaking. And all of the stories that we're seeing come out of Uvalde are a testament to the countless failures of the United States of America to fundamentally deal with the problem that is violence. Specifically in this case, gun violence. But it's important to understand all of the factors that play into this because this isn't just a failure when it comes to people having too much access to guns. This is also a very explicit failure on the part of the police department because the police department literally sat there for somewhere around an hour. They keep changing the story Story on the timeline, which is another issue, the fact that the police are so willing to lie to the public, even when there are countless videos and eyewitness testimony that contradict the statements from the police department. But the fact that the police officers were willing to sit around and do nothing while children were literally dying, and then to actively put a child in danger by calling for them to ask for help, which led to one of the students calling out and then getting shot as a result of the police failure. The police making the children feel as though they were safe when they actually were not. Not to mention the fact that the police officers actively prevented parents from going in to save their own children when they realized that the police weren't going to do anything themselves. This issue has multiple layers to it. Now a lot of people are running with the line of, oh well if police officers are so scared of AR-15s then clearly we have to take AR-15s out of everybody's hands. And that's an interesting line of thought but I think that gives too much of a pass to the police officers because there were parents who were willing to charge in there. In fact there was a parent that went in and saved her own kid. So I think we should should avoid the talking point of, oh, AR-15s are so dangerous that even police are afraid of them. Because the reality is that parents were willing to charge in there anyways. And police most definitely hold responsibility for their failure to act. No, actually, the police did act. The primary act of police in that instance was actually to prevent parents from doing anything heroic. So we know with absolute certainty that any proposal from the Republican Party at this point is completely disconnected from reality, it wouldn't actually do anything to solve any problem. But the proposed solution from the Democrats doesn't do anything near enough to actually address the problem. Because let's think about this for a second. Say, for example, we set an age requirement of 25 to own any type of semi-automatic weapon, and we require background checks. Well, even though this kid was just 18, he would have passed a background check. And there are plenty of people who, in the past, have committed shootings like this who did pass background checks. So how would background checks fundamentally change the environment? The reality is that they wouldn't. They might stop a little bit of it, but not much. And when you look at the history of the use of gun laws in the United States, historically, gun laws have only ever existed to prevent marginalized people from getting access to firearms. The first gun law in the United States was literally to ban the sale of firearms to indigenous people. And I think we all know exactly why. Then you look at the wave of gun legislation that happened since the Reagan era, and it's very clear that those gun laws were crafted specifically to prevent Black Panthers from owning firearms. And still to this very day, it is predominantly Black Americans that are denied the right to own a firearm. Even legal gun owners are very often shot by police, people like Philando Castile. So the proposals coming from the Democrats very much fall along those lines. They won't actively prevent white supremacists from getting access to firearms. Now why is that? Well, it's because our system of policing is fundamentally racist. It is designed to deny the rights and privileges of citizenship to black Americans and other marginalized people. So even if we put in place the perfect gun policies, the reality is our system of policing would only implement it in an entirely one-sided way. That is to say, white supremacist police will never work to disarm white supremacist civilians, no matter what the law is. So fundamentally, if we want to address the issue of guns in the United States, 
then we can't do that without also addressing the failures of our policing system. So long as we have so many white supremacists in our police departments, so long as our police departments are militarized and committing countless acts of violence in our community, so long as the police department exclusively serves the interest of capital and is designed not to be a organization of public safety, but instead to be an organization of occupation and terror of community, then we will never be able to address the issue that is vigilantist violence and mass shootings that exist within our country. In fact, we also need to understand something. That if you look at the specifically white supremacist shooters in the United States, a lot of police officers share very similar mentalities as them. So is it any surprise that the explicitly white supremacist shooters very often get much kinder treatment from law enforcement? Not that that is the case in Yuval, but it is the case in countless instances that are worth bringing up because this widespread violence committed by individuals, these acts of mass terror, have existed all throughout the history of the United States since our very beginning. They play a very critical role in propping up the police state. They play a very critical role in terrorizing communities, specifically marginalized people. The fact that the police did nothing to respond to the shooter is a reflection of the reality that police officers do not view their jobs as preventing things like this from happening, which should call into question everything that you believe about a police department and what their role is. While they run around pretending that their role is to serve and protect historically within the United States, they have been more so institutions of violence directed against marginalized people. All of this is to say, if we want to deal with the issue of guns in the United States, we need to replace police departments across the country with real institutions for public safety, with real institutions to care for people's needs. And we need to be comfortable with the idea of purging white supremacists from these institutions, of categorically disallowing white supremacists from existing within these institutions. Because unless we are going to do that, even if we put in place the perfect gun policies, the police will still be there with unequal enforcement to ensure that the only people who do have guns are exactly the type of people that commit these types of mass shootings.